Hi there guys, this is Cassandra. I'm a riffle in time and I'm so glad you're here. It is slowly falling into my favorite season and I'm just excited. I've seen everybody kind of trickling out their fall decks videos and we're at it today. As usual, I have no clear plan other than that, that we're gonna look at some decks that I thought of. And all I did is right before this video, I grabbed everyone off the shelf that immediately came to my head. So we'll see what we think. I know that, <laughs> I always start with a disclaimer, uh, I never stick to these, like exactly. I know some people are really like, these are the decks I'm gonna use and this is it. It's not me, it will never be me, I just follow the wind. But these are the kind of decks I'm gonna be drawn to, I'm like planning on using, or like some of these I'm like sitting out because it's what I use every year, or I have been kind of waiting to use it almost. Like there's sometimes a deck just gives me a certain vibe and I just can't shake it. So these are what I I'm kind of planning on, but there'll still be tons of other decks I use in between. Like the Gaia is one of my new decks. Um, I think I just shared a video about it, who knows? But I'm I'm really into it right now. So yeah, I'm gonna use that. Um, I actually am gonna pull out Visions and Death Doula. They were in the back. Um, I was just about to say, I'm so glad I thought about that. Uh, Visions is a deck I use all year round. But for some reason, it seems like Visions really starts hitting really well in like the latter part of the year. And I was just thinking too about, actually we'll start here. So the Hollow Valley deck of symbols, it's not that it's too particularly like themed or anything. A lot of these aren't, but there's something about it that kind of gives me a little bit of like Memento Mori vibes where, I don't know, it's there's something about it that's a little witchy. I mean, it's talking about symbols of, <laughs> so I guess, I mean, this whole video is just a little bit witchy, but you know what I mean? Like, and it's black and white. Usually during spring and summer, I'm in a color phase, so I don't usually draw too much to this, but I was thinking another deck that's black and white that I seem to kind of, use a lot in the in the fall and winter is visions and what if we double oracle it and just do a black and white fantasy i think i might be here for it here i worst uh tarot tuber alive never even have space to show you the cards i'm just excited in here oh i think this is kind of like weirdly cool they're very different vibes but I feel like Kaylee, who illustrates the visions, would really enjoy this deck if she doesn't have it. Um, I think she would have enjoyed it. So they're, uh, they're kind of cool. So I think I'm going to try that. That is something I will be up to. But I've been really wanting to use uh, the Hollow Valley deck of symbols. And I just haven't been making a ton of time for it. And... I think I can like do it as almost like a a little thing. Um, it reminds me almost of like when I do kind of little, I'm trying to think of the word, learning kind of activities. Me and Marcellus will do almost like homeschool-like where it's like, this is the theme of the week. Maybe I'll do it like that, where like I pick a specific symbol for the day or the week and I'll kind of focus on it or the month, who knows? <laughs> who knows how long I can keep up on something? I don't know. Uh, another deck that I've been really feeling is going to just hit so well during the fall that I've kind of been holding off on using is Terror of the Strange Antlers is the translated name, but this was a deck that I saw Oh, no, I'm gonna be real. I don't remember. I probably told you when I found it whose channel it was. Oh, it's really hard to see. Focus. Thank you. But there's something about the like darker kind of, again, it's like a little bit 
dark and witchy, naturey. It feels more like fall though to me than it does because you can be a witch any time of year. But there's a lot of it that has this kind of darker feel to it. And I also really love to keep my my colorways, like lean into a different vibe because I'm so again rainbow during the first half of the year. But this one, when I first saw it, I felt like fall. And I can't explain probably exactly why that is other than I don't know maybe maybe it's just the vibes maybe you'll see it too and it'll make more sense but every reading I pulled like I was pulling cards it seems like I always get like the the darker colored cards on this in this deck as well when I do pull and like even the bag like it feels like I don't know it feels like the time I don't know what I would pair with it though per se I don't have a deck that when I look at it, I think exactly like pairings. Now, a pairing that I really am excited to use in the fall. This is like a fall winter vibe, it seems for me. And it's weird because Janasa isn't really uh, wintry by any means, but I'll show you, or actually I'll just show you together because I do pair these. All feel like winter I used these but I hadn't trimmed them yet in the fall but I'm thinking they're gonna be a good and this feels like kind of like that transition out of summer so maybe I'll just start using it now and this feels like a little transition into winter so maybe like from now till like when we're leaving winter into spring this will be the hit there's something again a little darker the colorways are a little bit more of this like not bright summer green and it's not like a bright lavender kind of purple it's like more of that that deeper vibe and then obviously somnia i mean somnia is definitely one of my is it moodier is that what i do i just get moodier in the fall like look at this face here <laughs> Maybe I'm just a little moody in the fall and winter and it just matches the vibes. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I really love this combo. I don't know if any of my combos ever make sense to anyone, but if you feel the hit, let, let me know because <laughs> I just love it. And I had a lot of fun with this too when I first trimmed it because it became this beautiful practice for me of really forcing myself to read intuitively because one of the big reasons I didn't read Janasa for so long was because it was in another language and I couldn't tell immediately on a lot of the cards like exactly what card it was supposed to be and that was beautiful and then again I just trimmed the, them both at the same time and it became this lovely, I'm going to actually leave that out. Been really looking forward to that. And it's not like I'm necessarily holding off for these either. It just doesn't feel right. Even when I like think about it. So like, say like the Terror of the Strange Antlers or these two, when I think about it, I'm just not in the mood for it. I've been, you know, dancing a different dance. And honestly, one that I've been really enjoying this summer and I'll probably use into fall is Lilifer. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just picking up another deck that wasn't old. <laughs> this is going to be a century long. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. But I don't know. It's been really lovely. I think this deck is a really good all-rounder, like all year round. Um, <laughs> I've been playing too much Pokemon Unite. Um, that's been my uh, kind of disassociated disassociating activity i've been playing pokemon <laughs> but it's been lovely and i there's something about it that it's like the backs you would think do that bright summer and there's a lot of bright colors but somehow it still stays it's so steady for me even the cards that are more like colorful it doesn't feel necessarily one place or the other this feels like a really good well 
evened out. And I have a lot of decks I can do that with. Like Outgrow Yourself is another deck that I just can use any time of year and it doesn't, I don't have that effect. But for some reason, Somnia, I think specifically Somnia, gives me a kind of a darker, moodier vibe. Speaking of moodier, the Terra Volatile, another deck I just haven't been reaching for since the kind of winter winter's end and I'm really excited to get into it please tell me that you see the like fall vibe I don't know I don't know how to explain it like this is like the later half of the year kind of deck for me I I need to investigate this I'm gonna do a whole journal about what is wrong with that but I don't know it just I get that way with shows even like everything is very my clothes will even change I don't know I'm like certain colors are for certain times of the year <laughs> and if it's not like really kind of the spring summer vibrance then it's definitely like a fall winter deck for me I don't know but I'm really excited to to be using this I want to find a good pair up I'm gonna have to look if you have a good pair up for Terra Volatile, let me know. Okay, so we have a lot of decks left. Uh, <laughs> where do we go next? Um, honestly, some easy choices for me were the um, Oaky Smoky Pokies, um, Oak Ash Thorn, Smoke Ash Embers, uh, Thistle Down, Heartwood. Heartwood's the new one, so maybe we'll do that. But there's something about the whole collection that just makes me feel like it's so easily fall. I mean, look at these little backs. This is Heartwood. Definitely more of that kind of deeper, darker color, a little more moody, very nature -y. And I do tend to get a little extra nature -y in the fall too. So the spring and the fall really bring out like nature vibes for me. It's funny because another deck that I have here is a deck that I use in the spring because of the nature vibes. Herb Crafter is another deck again. You, like I said, I in the spring it's like really springy too. But this is an easy deck for all year but something about the fall i pull out oak ash and thorn every year and heart was definitely going to be the same because they are so similar in like the the energy and thistle down i love having an oracle deck now that goes so well with them they're just perfect all year round but extra perfect for me in the fall it's like I turn into the the nature girl in the fall. <laughs> in the winter and the summer, I might just hibernate because I'm not a winter summer girl. That's just not me. But the spring and the fall, I go back outside and I just live my best life. We've we figured it out. We've really figured out what it is at a core here that <laughs> that drives. <laughs> It's too hot in the summer and it's too cold in the winter and I cannot be bothered. No, I still go outside. Don't get it wrong. I, I still don't go outside, but I don't love it as much. I am truly a fall spring girl. Um, but again, I feel like there is something to it that they are just a little more a little more folly. There's a little too much like leaf changing colors here for it to be a coincidence. <laughs> I mean, come on. I'm not making this up, right? <laughs> it's all in my head. But I do love the Three Trees tarot decks. Period, actually. Just period. Stop there. No more. <laughs> But I will definitely be using those quite a bit. Uh, the one deck I was talking about that spring summers for me is the Forest Lore Tarot. I think it is the vibe though. There's 
it's like the most beautiful time because like in spring everything's blooming everything's starting and in the fall like I'm watching that the absolute opposite in such a beautiful way is like everything's falling everything's getting ready for the sleep <laughs> and I feel like too at least from where I am animals too are just really out and about in the spring and the fall the summer I think they also agree it's a little too hot and in the winter it's too cold but it's just the perfect time for us to all go outside and play <laughs> I have um my hair in my mouth feels like normal though death doula another absolute every fall and winter honestly I am surprised I don't use this more year round no. but this always comes out I do love to pair it with like decks like the ritual tarot which is more of a fall winter deck for me it's actually not on the table I'm not sure why I just thought of that but I think this is this is really pulled to by the tarot decks I love to pair it with. So maybe that's why it stays a little. And then again, it's a little darker. A little darker, a little a little more witchy. It does have like a a spell or like a meditation or something with every card. So I think I'm just my best witchy self in the fall. The Oracle deck, I'm probably most sure I'm going to be popping out in the in the folly and not just kind of the later half of the year. I love I love to kind of lean into the ooky spooky vibes of the my next couple decks will do the my Halloween decks. This is such a beautiful deck anytime, but it definitely does give me my favorite kind of Halloween vibe. It's intentionally, I mean, it's the Memento Mori, so it is the kind of, um, I don't want to say deadlier end of things, but it is more of like that kind of instead of spring where I'm thinking of like the renewal, this is the opposite. But I mean, come on, even in like face level too, it's like we have lots of skulls and skeletons and it is very snakes and, <laughs> but there's something so, maybe it is something just so witchy about it it's not even a little deck either it's a huge deck it's just perfectly it's perfectly about death <laughs> and that's what the fall for me is it's perfectly about death um i also really want to see how it goes paired up with the next one i was thinking of which is the hush i thought about this when I was pulling out, I might, I might use these together because Hush also dances that, um, life and death line for me. It's also on the, the more looking at it, looking at death spectrum for me. Um, and I do, I, I think they might just be perfectly spooky together and I think something about death just feels a little spooky you know it doesn't have to but it does <laughs> not always but mostly I think that this is going to be a, a lovely setup Next is the Horror Tarot. This one's another one that's pretty conceptually cool. This is all about, you know, horror. <laughs> but I think it's really cool. I'm gonna actually, I'll read from the guidebook. 
to tell you about specifically the cards, but I think that if I'm remembering correctly, this is from the creator of uh, the Pulp Tarot. So Todd does both of these. And this one was based off of horror, like, but I'm pretty sure he made up like movie posters for like all of the the majors based off of movies and like what they'd be because if you look so you have temperance you have like the little movie thing but this actually says stuff about the card itself so like up there where it would be about the movie it says um this is the temperance card so your life is in balance earth and water pleasure and pain life and death and everything in moderation and then down here horror tarot presents the 14th card in the major arcana temperance a symbol of balance moderation and patience an angel that is neither male nor female bearing a triangle to symbolize humanity's connection to earth earth and water in balance the divine chemistry that makes life possible like how cool is that um, I know that some of the, it's with all of the majors, but the minors are based off of, um, let's just do it. <laughs> Get into it. So yeah. Um, for the major arcana, I thought it would be fun to pay homage to the horror movies I've enjoyed since my youth. I dreamed up an imaginary movie studio, the horror tarot studio, populated it with imaginary filmmakers and created 22 posters for movies like they might have made if they had existed. The suit of wands images are original paintings um, and from the 60s and 70s, I believe. Uh, that's what we're seeing here. The suit of cups is based off of 1980s uh, horror paperbacks. Oh, I created a fictional writers group called the horror tarot and gave them a 14 volume master work <laughs> ah that's so funny the suit of swords um i wanted to create a tribute to the ec horror comics of the 1950s um they published a number of sensational weird gory titles the covers were so over the top in their depictions of violence yeah, okay so which eventually led to the demise and destruction of for the deck, I created a publisher called, you guessed it, Horror Tarot Comics and dreamed up stories you might see illustrated there. The suit of pentacles, I was inspired by the cover of various horror pulp magazines in the 30s and 40s, um, horror terrors, terror tales, ghost stories, uncanny tales. Um, that's so cool. The fictional publisher of these magazines, Horror Terror Publications, is unrelated to the comic publisher, the movie studio, or the famous writers group. So it's just so cool, like, creating um imaginary studios and things so that you can have a whole de ah. gosh i love this deck more even reading that it's like i knew a little bit about it but i didn't know all um i love todd so so <laughs> this is this is brilliant and again horror it's halloween time is my time for scary movies I feel like there are other people that feel the same. I know there are people who horror movie all year round. Um, then we have the Halloween tarot, like literally talking Halloween. I always have this deck in my bag. Soon as, as soon as like the, the beginning of October happens. Now, sometimes depending on outside, it'll, it'll leave a little early. It might be in there like here in a couple weeks. <laughs> But this is like cutesy Halloween. This is, this is that um, cutesy, kitschy kind of vibe, but it's a perfect pen for Halloween. Halloweeny time. I have also the Teeny Tiny Tarot is, I think, kind of honestly, Holly Oddly is just a little bit uh, spooky, like cutesy <laughs> in general with um, her art. And I think it's perfect to have like eyeballs and sewing needles and skull cups, you know what I mean? Like brooms and <laughs> it just feels right. Um, I also love the chariot being like Baba Yaga's, you know what I mean? Like, come on. If this doesn't give you a little bit of like 
the kind of like Halloweeny folly vibe. I don't know what to tell you. We're not the same. <laughs> we have a black cat for the emperor. <laughs> um, I really love the eyeballs, man. I don't know what it is. I think Holly does such a good job at making things like creepy cute or like spooky cute maybe. I don't know the exact terminology here for this, but like how is how is the skull so cute? I don't know. How are eyeballs cute? Couldn't I couldn't tell you. But I think this is like an eyeball soup, but how cute is it? It's too cute. And honestly, probably most of the mini divvies will be out as well. I didn't bring them out, but like the witching especially will be a perfect mini divvy for you guessed it. Fall time. <laughs> oh wait, this goes up here. Oh no. I might have to actually, I will. I'm actually going to get them out. I have my um, mini divvy box down in my personal collection shelf and that just doesn't make sense. Um, let's look at least at the witching because I think the witching only makes sense that it has to be out for my favorite time to be a witch. Um, the time where everybody finds it socially acceptable for me to be a witch. <laughs> um, but it's just like perfect. It's perfect. This is going to be so I love pairing the mini divvies with the teeny tiny tarot and this is my favorite time to use the teeny tiny tarot. So here we are in perfect harmony. Um, but we also have ends and lore that just came out of the mini divvies and I have restocked. So I have these three and then I have restocked omens and ghosts. Ghosts will be perfect too. Perfect, perfect, perfect people. And then last, but maybe not as obvious. Um, and also a little just because I'm obsessed with it right now is the phases and forests. I think it sticks very true to the fact that I'm extra nature focused. I think it also is beautiful and I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> My reasoning. No, also I'm very reflective towards the end of the year. This is all like journal kind of prompty vibes. Like each card has a question, a reflection, and that's where I'm at. I'm howling at the moon, people. I'm howling at the moon. And who's here with me? Phases and forest. So maybe that's why too, that I feel that my practice is at its finest, at its best, when I am in the fall time, because I'm more reflective in the fall. I feel like there's certain, like, certain times of year where I'm more living in my body and there's certain times of year where I'm more in my head. Hmm. I swear this could turn into very quickly a uh, chat session if I do not get off of here. Because <laughs> I just had a good thought. Maybe I'll do a second video and it's me journaling out my feelings about that. This was a chaotic video. Just, I'm apologizing now. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clip this part. I'm going to put it in the front. Um, warning, this is a very chatty video. I'm not sure if I made a single bit of sense while recording this, I'm not sure if any of my reasoning is sensible or valid. And um, I don't know what just happened. I feel like I just talked, I was just chatting with my friends for this video. And as usual, I did no planning. I didn't think about things ahead of time. So my reasoning was just in the moment, I chose it. and. Sometimes it's hard for me to explain that because sometimes I just feel things and I can't explain it, but I tried. And it might have just been me repeating, I tried over and over again. <laughs> I love you. Uh, okay, so ending, um, I just clipped the part I just said 
to the beginning, hopefully, I remembered to do that to let you know that this is just me babbling. So if you're still here, you love me and I love you. Yeah. <laughs>